I N D I A N A, that's Indiana. Ballin' like Reggie Miller, that's Indiana. I put up on my state, that's Indiana. Watch me rap it in your face, that's Indiana. That's Indiana. That's Indiana. Hi, I'm Matt from Ludovox and today we are at Gen Con 2016 on the fourth day on the booth of Great Northern Games with Jay, the designer of Council of Blackthorn. Hi Jay. How are you doing? <laughs> that, that is an answer. What about you? Uh, I'm doing awesome. It's been four days and we've had a lot of response, a lot of positive response to the game. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to go through a demo. You've asked me to film a demo so everybody can see what the premise is for the game. It's called Council of Blackthorn, if I didn't say that. And uh, I don't know if you want me to start with the yeah. description already. Uh, maybe uh, how many players can play this? And it's two to six players, two to six players, and it is... Uh, it, about four players will take about 55 minutes, mm -hmm. five players about an hour and 10 minutes, so somewhere in that range. And uh, um, so the premise of the game is, is that the king uh, consolidated the kingdoms several years ago, but now it's been many years and he's not really involved in running the government anymore, not really interested in it. So the, the government is, the country is being run by the uh, council of the king. And so all of the play, each of the players plays one of the council members. There's six characters to play. Um, this is an example of one of them. This is the uh, queen. And uh, there's queen, there's the minister of coin, there's the seventh vigil. The lord of war. The lord of war and the lord of, uh, lord of the tower. So there's six characters. So the object of the game is uh, there are four political factions, the legions, the nobles, the guilds, and the peasants, who also represent the clergy. So the object of the game is to be the council member that builds the most influence um, and most power by the end of the game. However, at the end of the game, the king is going to behead one of the council members to keep, because he is still the king just to keep all of the other council members in check. In check. <laughs> so basically, uh, create your power base, create your influence, and try to keep a low profile so you can get one of your other friends beheaded. Because everybody loves beheading friends and family members. Sure. <laughs> so um, I guess that uh, the, the track here indicates the victory points that we net for having influence. Right. So as you, as you play the game, for example, if we take, again, let's take the character of the queen. The, this measures, here's the queen. This is the queen's symbol. And so you can see this is the amount of influence the queen has with the peasants, with the legion, with the nobles, not, not very popular with her own uh, group and uh, with the guilds themselves or the merchants. So throughout the game, each turn, um, the right hand of the king is going to roll the dice and they're custom dice. They're 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3. So those dice represent the amount of levels of influence that you'll gain by playing a card of that faction. So we'll move some of the cards in here. For example, this is a noble card it matches the uh, noble track and if on my turn each player plays one card on my turn if I play the princess the red die is a two so um, let's say I was uh, let's say I was the queen I would gain two levels of influence on the noble track now the, the more interesting thing or just as interesting is each card has a second function and that is a text function or a powerful um, a uh, powerful effect that you would like. However, in order for you to, to uh, uh, trigger this, you have to have at least four influence with the guild. So when you play a card, you always get the influence within the faction that you've played, but to get the full effect of the card, you always have to have at least a certain amount of influence in a different faction. It's never the same faction. So you always have to build influence in one faction so that your cards in a different political faction actually uh, trigger their powers. And that creates a really um, simple yet complex strategy 
to try that you always have to be thinking two or three turns ahead in order to make sure that all of your cards work. Now the game continue as the game continues on, each one of your turns you end up scoring points depending on whether you are in the lead. At the end of your turn, you get two points, two influence points from the bank um, for every faction that you are leading in. All of these uh, coins for influence have the same back. So as you pile up, um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but as you continue on throughout the game, you score points. The other players don't know how many points you have. They can tell how, how many points you've scored in factions, but they can't tell for coins. So you continue to play the game. When you get to 13, when any player gets to 13 in a level, that locks out that faction. At, the, if, at any point in time during the game, if three of the factions are locked at level 13, then the game ends, everybody adds up all of their points that they scored for each faction, and then they also reveal the number of points they scored in coins, which nobody knows, and then they score for their buildings. So at that point in time, everybody knows how much influence everyone scored. Now the interesting thing is, is also throughout, that, throughout the game, um, players have been uh, receiving treason cards. That's the back of the treason deck. I'll move this over. And there are four types of treason cards. A treason card, a treason card ties an event. It says that they're bribes, spies, rumors, and poison. So at the end of the game, as you play the game, excuse me, you are going to be collecting these cards based off of how you play the game. And players can move these cards back and forth with each other. They can do things to make you gain more of these. In general, the more obvious that you are in the lead, the more of these cards other players will give you. At the end of the game, you reveal the cards, uh, usually dramatically, slowly. We start with the player that has the least amount of influence points. And at the end of the, the last thing you do then is the player that uh, scores the most number of treason points is beheaded by the king and re <clears throat> excuse me and removed from the game. So after that, then the player, the remaining player that has the highest influence, wins the game and becomes the most powerful council member. So that's it. Uh, yeah, but I noticed that the uh, the players, uh, the different factions had uh, powers, player powers. Are they yeah. a yeah. bit different? Yes. Every all six characters have uh, uh, different actions that they can do, different powers, different descriptions, and uh, so every time you play this game with uh, a different character, it plays completely differently. So. They're asymmetrical powers. It's been played hundreds of times, so they're all balanced. You know, and I've played every one of these characters a bunch. Most people have their favorite character that they like to play. So, um, so you are the designer of Council of Blackthorn, yeah. and um, why? Well, how did you have the idea of Council of Blackthorn? Was it the backstabbing element? Was it a narrative in which you had to manage different factions, or uh, a mechanic idea? Well. Uh, 15 months ago, I was uh, watching a popular television series, and I was noticing that the kings in the sh in the story, the kings keep getting killed, and they keep moving along, and they keep bumping each other off. But the council members somehow always manage to to uh, pull all these strings and be on this intricate spider web that no one catch and I always wondered, you know, how is it that they aren't getting uh, beheaded or killed? How do they manage to get in, intertwined in all of the different things that they're doing? And the idea just hit me. So I had to try to sit down. I sat down and said, I want to create something where influence in one area has to be gained to get influence in another area and that all of it is tied together so there isn't just one thing you can go do you have to do sev you have to be good at several different things and there's a lot of little pieces yeah yeah so i wanted to create kind of a spider web in my mind where if you uh, tweaked part of the spider web over here it vibrated over on this side and then you know, and i like I have 17 game design principles, so 
one of them is to push the the end condition, the win condition, as far to the end as possible to keep players engaged. You know, so this and in this particular game, nobody knows until the very end who actually won because there's hidden information. And then the next step, nobody knows who's going to lose their head until the last. Uh, sometimes it's, it might be the last five seconds of the game. So that's where the idea came from. Um, do you have room for, for example, expansions if yes. uh, if the response is there? Yes, absolutely. You know, so we have, uh, you know, I'm not, I won't talk about it, but yeah, we have uh, about four expansion ideas that we've tried so far. Okay. I would say three of the four have worked. One of them did not. Um, so there'll be things like extra characters, uh, more characters to play. Uh, we'll also bring in other factions. We're also uh, studying a co-op, a little sub-game uh, cooperative element to it. So that one's tricky, but um, that's the one I'm most excited about. So. Maybe team spirit where you can backstab uh, other people in your team to get more points? Yeah, well, you're all, yeah. There's always going to be backstabbing. I have a, my game design group is six, we're always six players, mm -hmm. and we like to play, we like to play uh, at least two or three games a night. So I try to design for six players. I design so we can play more than once a night. And I try to design it so there's a lot of backstabbing. That's just the, <laughs> the group that, I, uh, that are my closest friends. So, and this game fits that bill perfectly. So, Well, thank you very much, Jay, for your time thank and you. for this beautiful overview of Council of Backthorn. Right. Bye. See you on Udavox. Thanks. I N D I A N A. That's Indiana. Falling like Reggie Miller, that's Indiana I put up for my state, that's Indiana Watch me rep it in your face, that's Indiana That's Indiana, that's Indiana, that's Indiana. <laughs>